Hello folks, welcome back to Local Liberty's Community Chat segment. This is the segment where we give you a chance to voice your views on whatever might interest you. I'm your host Shane Goodrich and joining me today is Peter Millman to talk about shared solar. Peter, what's shared solar? Shared solar is solar for the approximately 80% of households in Connecticut that cannot put rooftop panels on their homes. Uh, they may not be able to do it because they're roof is shaded, or because it's not in very good condition, or because uh, it's not oriented in the right direction, or because a rooftop may not be owned by the household. So for if you're a renter, uh, for example, you don't own the roof, you can't put solar panels on it. And that applies to, again, about 80% of homes in Connecticut. So there is a solution, and it's called shared solar, sometimes called community shared solar. And the way it works is this, that someone or some group of people or some entity, uh, profit or non-profit, can put a large solar array, a good sized solar array, might be for 50 homes or for 100 homes or for 300 homes, depending on the location and the regulations of the state. And then that electricity is sold to subscribers uh, households and uh, the electricity from the solar garden, sometimes it's called a solar garden or solar farm, uh, goes into the grid. You as a subscriber get credited with your share of the output of that solar farm and uh, therefore you derive the benefits of having solar power. Peter, this, this sounds great but I'm guessing you're facing some challenges. I mean, can people just do this right now? Can people form a community for shared solar, buy some land, start this up? No. Um, each state has to enable shared solar. Um, there are regulations involved that have to be written and, and approved by legislatures, partly because a shared solar system, a solar farm, is interacting with an electric company. That would be a, a utility. And, the, and utilities uh, are regulated by public authorities in all states as far as I know. So there has to be enabling legislation. There are maybe a half a dozen to a dozen states in the United States that now have enabling legislation. Connecticut is not one of them. Uh, now when you say enabling legislation, what is blocking you from moving forward shared solar right now? Who, who is on the other side? Okay. Um, well, I would say in general, uh, the power companies are not too happy to have a lot more solar in Connecticut, and this could result in a lot more solar. Essentially, the power that is provided by solar panels is power that's not bought through an established electric company such as Eversource or United Illumination. There is some solar that is uh, allowed into the system, uh, but both here in Connecticut and around the country, electric companies are in general making it more difficult for solar electricity to enter the system. Uh, one way that this is done is by undervaluing the electricity, the surplus electricity that comes from your rooftop, if it's in Connecticut, or from a shared solar farm, in other states. And, and let me just mention that states like California, Colorado, New York, Minnesota, uh, Vermont, Massachusetts all have solar um, shared solar legislation and uh, so this is not a far out idea. Um, it's been well tested and we should be doing it here. Tell me, you say undervalued, who, who is determining the price? Is this just the, the power companies themselves? Who gets to make that decision? I believe that that is done by the public utility regulatory authority in each state. Um, it is those authorities, and Connecticut has such a, 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 an agency, uh, and through the legislature and through the regulatory body, they determine what the value is going to be. Just for example, in the state of Nevada in the last month, uh, the regulatory authority uh, said that power companies do not need to buy the surplus electricity from solar panels. 
in the state of California, uh, the regulatory body recently passed uh, regulations that were very favorable to power uh, to power um, to owners of rooftop solar and other solar installations. But the problem with the power companies is they're in a uh, they have a monopoly over the system. Right. You have to use like, their, their public lines. There's not uh, many alternatives. There's no competition. So in California, is this the, also the case? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm not an expert on the power system in the United States, but you do need the cooperation of a state legislature and a utility regulatory authority and by extension a power company to have shared solar. Essentially the issue is when my solar rooftop panels or the solar output of a farm is uh, producing more power than is actually needed at the moment and I want to sell back my excess solar power to the electric company, what is that worth? What is the value of that? And electric companies tend to want to value that as low as possible and of course producers of electric energy, uh, of solar energy want to produce, want to value it at a level that is, um, that allows the solar panels in a financially feasible way. So it gets into a lot of details but essentially power companies want to uh, value that electricity sold back to the power company uh, at wholesale rates and solar producers, you and me potentially, want at least a retail rate or, or more. Well don't you think the problem here is the power company's entrenched position because they're the only player you have to deal with. There's no one else bargaining over that electricity. Yeah, I guess that that's true. Um, there has to be the, the uh, cooperation and the interaction between solar panel um, or solar electricity producers and a power company uh, because the solar output or the electrical output from a solar farm does not go directly down the line three miles away to a subscriber. The electricity from the solar farm goes into the grid and then the electric power that's used by a subscriber some miles away is coming out of the grid. It's a matter of accounting and the, and the term for the, the, the uh, method of accounting is called virtual net metering uh, which is a type of net metering uh, net metering is more typically uh, re uh, used uh, when talking about solar panels on your roof. And so a net metering is where there's a system of taking, of keeping track of how much electricity are you pulling from the system as a homeowner and how much are you putting back in on a bright July day uh, when, you're, when, the, when your solar panels are using more than your household can use. I see you've, you've thought this through, you've, you're passionate about this issue, um, but why should other people be interested in this? Why should they support you? I think there are a few reasons. Um, one is that we should have choice as consumers of electricity. Where is our electricity coming from? I, I don't think there should be a, a, a monopoly on that. Secondly, solar power with federal, uh, in this part of the country, with federal uh, credits with state credits and incentives can be far less expensive than power coming from a uh, gas or coal-fired power plant. There are definitely climate change issues here that we need to make a transition from the fossil fuel in, uh, power paradigm to a renewable energy future. And this is one way to do it. Again, 80% of households cannot put solar panels on their roofs. So shared solar is one part of the solution. Um, there are other benefits to the power grid and to all ratepayers by having solar power. So on a hot August afternoon, uh, a power company needs to buy extra power from distant uh, generators to make up for the 
surge in uh, demand for all those air conditioners here in Connecticut. If you have a lot of solar power in uh, the system, then the power company, Eversource, doesn't have to buy as much uh, high, uh, peak demand electricity at a very high cost. And that high cost is certainly passed on to all ratepayers. And there are other ways like that. It's part of what we would call a distributed system, uh, where by having solar panels distributed throughout the power grid, uh, you can reduce the overall cost to all ratepayers, not just to uh, those with sun solar panels. Tell me, right now, um, you're expecting to use the power company's power during the winter and rely on solar in the summer, generally speaking, in Connecticut. I mean, how much of power will you get from solar? Well, certainly uh, in the summer, um, many people with uh, solar systems can power their whole house uh, through, through uh, their solar panels. It depends a little bit on, um, you know, how efficient their home is, it is, you know, how good the insulation is. In the winter, you know, it depends on whether you have uh, baseboard electric power, uh, heat pump, uh, gas furnace, oil furnace, again, also how well your house is insulated. So there, I don't have a precise answer for that, but a substantial part of the electricity you use can come from solar um, electricity. Do you follow the technology at all? Do you know in, the, in 10 years from now we could be completely self-sufficient? Do you have any idea of the trends? Well, you know, there are different views of all of this. The technology is pretty darn good. Um, this cost of solar panels, which is a, in part a reflection of the technology of creating solar panels, the cost has come way, way down over the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, it will probably continue to come down. Uh, there's really no reason that we couldn't cr use a substantially more or get substantially more of our electricity from solar panels right now with this technology. And technology is only going to be improving. In the immediate future, what are your biggest uh, roadblocks to success? What, what right now is stopping you from moving forward? I think the biggest roadblocks are to some degree, opposition from the electric companies, Eversource and United Illumination. I think the uninvolvement, the non-involvement of ordinary citizens of the state of Connecticut. Uh, if, you, if this sounds like something that should happen, you as an individual citizen need to become involved. And I know that there can be a sense of powerlessness about climate change in general and issues like this specifically. But I can assure you that you as an individual, and even better, you as a, as a member of a small group, uh, can uh, definitely influence the view of your state legislator and the views of your town council members. Now this is mostly a state issue, so in this case, um, state legislators are important. And you know, that's one thing, I'm part of a group called Eastern Connecticut Green Action, our website is www.easternctgreenaction, all one word, Eastern CT Green Action. We also have a Facebook page. It'll be in the comments below, all the links. You know, our whole approach is that if that we, can, we want to help people start in uh, groups in individual towns so that they can be talking to their town council and to their state legislatures about uh, legislators about climate change issues. We can really have an effect at the local level that is much harder to have at the national level. And if you don't mind, I would like to mention that we're going to be having a regional forum on shared solar uh, on March 3rd, Thursday, March 3rd, 7 p.m. at, your, at the Audrey Beck uh, Municipal Building, which is the town hall for the town of, town of Mansfield, 7 p.m. Everybody is welcome. Come and learn more about shared solar and even more importantly, what you can do to influence the debate in Connecticut. Well said. Check out all the links below in, in, in the comments. It'll take you to all the sites that Peter just named. Peter, we'd love to have you back again to talk about maybe, maybe the, the larger group that you mentioned. But either way, it's been a pleasure to have you. This has been Peter Billman. My name is Shane Goodrich and this has been Local Liberty. Catch you guys next time. Thanks, Shane.